All right, so here's some tips to verifying your trigonometric identities. Remember, when you want to verify trigonometric identity, you're trying to show that one side is equal to another side. So the first thing is pick a side. Choose a side that is the most complicated, meaning you can apply operations um, like multiplying or adding or reducing fractions, as well as apply your operations and then work on that side only. Step number two, apply your operations. Look to multiply, look to factor, look to add and subtract fractions, or rationalize with using the conjugate. The next step, step number three, apply your identities. Look for the reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, the even odd identities, the co-function identities, and the Pythagorean identities. If you see something squared, think Pythagorean. Next, if you get stuck, try converting everything to sines and cosines or to x's and y's. A lot of times that will help you see which um, properties you can use as well as how to apply the algebraic steps to go ahead and simplify. But most importantly, guys, is try. Try again and try again, erase it, scribble it out, and try again. If all else fails, maybe try switching the side, but keep on trying, you can do it, best of luck. Okay, so in this identity, we have a lot going on, on the left and really nothing going on, on the right. So if we wanna convert, we wanna simplify this to be able to one, we're gonna need some dividing out. We're gonna need some something in the numerator, something in the denominator to divide out. So what I'm gonna identify here is I know that I can rewrite these as fractions if I write them in terms of sines and cosines. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna write everything in terms of sines and cosines. Secant, I can write as a cosine of theta, and cotangent, I could write as a cosine of theta over sine of theta. I could write it as one over tangent, but that's not gonna help me divide anything out. I know if this is gonna divide to one, I need a lot to divide out. And here you can see that a cosine of theta over cosine of theta, that divides to one, and a sine of theta and a sine of theta, that divides to one. So therefore, I get a one equal to one, and now my identity has been verified. Cheers. Okay, so in this identity, what we're gonna do is work on the left-hand side because we want to reduce this fraction so therefore we can get a sine squared of theta. So basically, we wanna get the cosecant squared or the cosecant off the denominator. So to do that, we need to multiply by the reciprocal. Well, it might be helpful then to rewrite cosecant as one over sine using our reciprocal identity. Now, if I wanna multiply by the reciprocal of one over sine, I know that's just gonna be a sine of theta. And whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do in the numerator, now that is gonna to go to one, because that's really a sine of theta over one. And here you have a sine of theta times sine of theta, which is a sine squared of theta, which has now verified my identity. Sure. Okay, so in this identity, what we're gonna to wanna to do is again, get rid of our fraction, because if we can get rid of our fraction, hopefully we can make this look like a secant of theta and a tangent of theta on this left-hand side. So the first thing I recognize is I can distribute this cosine of theta into both of these terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I, if I rewrite this as one over cosine of theta plus a sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now I can recognize one over cosine of theta using my reciprocal identities is secant of theta and sine of theta over cosine of theta is tangent of theta using my quotient identities. And there you go, my identity has been verified. So to go ahead and verify this trigonometric identity, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is replace cosine of pi halves minus theta for sine of theta. That's gonna be our co-function identity. Then I can replace tangent with a negative tangent of theta. That's gonna be using our even odd identities. The right-hand side is gonna remain the same. Now I wanna get rid of this fraction, so it's just gonna simplify down to a negative cosine of theta. So if I need to get tangent of theta off the denominator, I need to multiply by its reciprocal. So it might be helpful to realize then, well, how else can we understand tangent? Well, we could, re we could rewrite tangent as a negative sine of theta over cosine of theta. So if I wanna multiply by the reciprocal, that's going to be a negative cosine of theta over sine of theta. So you multiply that on the top as well as on the bottom. Now, a lot of students don't understand why these are going to divide out. So it might be helpful to think of sine as really a sine of theta over one. Now you can see these sine of thetas, those are gonna divide out. You're left with a negative cosine of theta times one as this goes to one right here. And therefore your identity has now been verified. Okay, so let's go ahead and verify this identity. So the first thing we're gonna do is I see a secant um, squared of theta um, minus one, and I recognize that to be tangent squared of theta using my Pythagorean identities. Um, now, if I want to make this left side look like the right side, I need to get this sine squared of theta, um, sine squared off the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by a cosecant squared. The reason why is because that is your um, reciprocal, right? And reciprocal times sine is gonna equal one. Now, that's gonna equal one, but how do, the, how do we simplify this? So what I'll do is I'll rewrite the secant squared as one minus um, one over sine squared and tangent squared as sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. Now you can see the sine squareds are gonna divide out. That's gonna leave me with a one over a cosine squared of theta, which I can rewrite as a secant squared of theta, which using my Pythagorean identities again, I can rewrite as a tangent squared of theta plus one, which is the same on the set.
I'll switch this one up because this side is much more difficult than that side. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite 1 minus sine squared as a cosine squared, but I have to write on this side because I don't like being on that other side. So therefore, that can be written as a cosine squared theta. Now, if I want to get this to be simplified down to a cotangent squared, I can divide this cosine squared into both of these terms. So therefore, that would be a cosine squared of theta divided by a cosine squared of theta, right? It's like the division property with um, division, or distributive property with division. Now, obviously, cosine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta, that's just going to equal 1. Now here, what can I simplify this as? So let's rewrite this in terms of cosines and sines. So therefore, that's cosine squared of theta over sine squared of theta divided by a cosine squared of theta. Well, that's too many fractions. Multiply by 1 over cosine squared of theta times a 1 over cosine squared of theta. And what you recognize is we're left with a 1 over sine squared of theta, which is equal to a 1 minus cosecant squared of theta, which is equal to a negative cotangent squared of theta. Hey guys, let's verify the identity. Now, if the identity is telling you to do multiplication, then probably try doing multiplication. So the first thing we do is I'm going to multiply the sine of theta times cosecant of theta. Now, these are reciprocals of each other, so that's going to go to 1. Sine of theta times sine of theta is going to be a sine squared of theta, right? x times x is x squared. Sine of theta times sine of theta is a sine squared of theta. Now, using my Pythagorean identities, I recognize that 1 minus sine squared of theta is equal to a cosine squared of theta. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is pick the left side because I need to add these two fractions. Now, since they don't have any common denominators, I need to identify the common denominator, which, since they don't have any factors in common, is just going to be the product of the two denominators. So therefore, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by 1 minus sine of theta on the top and the bottom. Over here, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus a sine of theta. So what that's going to do is that's going to achieve a common denominator of 1 minus sine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta. Now, now I can combine the numerators. Well, any, when you just multiply times 1, you're going to be left with 1 minus sine of theta plus a 1 plus a sine of theta, all over my common denominator, which I can distribute using the difference of two squares to give me a 1 minus a sine squared of theta. Okay, so now I combine my like terms on my numerator. Sine, negative sine of theta plus sine of theta is going to go to 0. 1 plus 1 is 2. And I recognize this Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean relationship as going to be a cosine squared of theta. Now, 1 over, si 1 over cosine secant, so 2 over cosine squared, is going to be a 2 secant squared of theta. Verified. Okay, so let's go ahead and verify this identity. Now, this one looks kind of weird because um, we can't combine these like terms. But what I can do is I can rewrite this as a cosine of x plus a 1 over sine squared of x using my reciprocal identities. Now, I can combine these together to get them down to a single expression. I just got to get the common denominator, which is going to be the product of these two denominators. So I'm going to multiply by the other denominator on the other side to give me a common denominator of sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. Then, in the numerator here, I get a sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x all over this common denominator of sine squared of x cosine squared of x. Now, I recognize my Pythagorean relationship here. Sine squared plus cosine squared is going to equal to 1 all over a sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. Well, now you see you have the reciprocal. 1 over sine is going to be, 1 over sine squared is going to be a cosecant squared, and 1 over cosine is going to be a secant squared. And there you go. Verify. Okay, so when you have multiple of trigonometric functions, look to factor them out. Here you can see I have a secant squared of theta and a secant squared of theta. So I'm going to factor out the secant squared of theta, and that's going to leave me with a tangent squared of theta plus 1. Right? Now you see that a tangent squared of theta plus 1, that is going to be my Pythagorean identity. That's going to give me a secant squared of theta times a secant squared of theta. Now, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Secant squared of theta times secant squared of theta is going to be a secant to the fourth of theta. Verified. Okay, in this problem, what we're going to want to do is make the sine side look like the cosine side. So the first thing we do is I'm recognized I have extra signs here. I can factor out a sine squared of theta. If I factor out a sine squared of theta, I'm left with a minus, one minus a sine squared of theta. Now that's good because 1 minus sine squared of theta, that's going to give me cosine, which is going to make this look like over here. So I get a sine squared of theta. 1 minus sine squared is going to give me a cosine squared of theta. Now the problem is I need this to be all cosines. So I'm going to rewrite a sine squared as a 1 minus cosine squared of theta using my Pythagorean identity. Now I can apply the distributive property to give me a cosine squared of theta minus a cosine to the fourth of theta, which is my identity.
Okay, so in this identity, we're actually gonna work on the right-hand side. Now, I wanna get the one plus cosine of theta off the denominator, so to do that, I'm gonna multiply by a one minus a cosine of theta. What that's gonna do is that's going to create a Pythagorean identity in my denominator, which is going to give me my sine squared. So in the numerator, that's gonna remain the same. I don't wanna multiply that out, but here I get a one minus a cosine squared of theta. That is going to be my sine squared. When I get a sine squared in my denominator, that's exactly what I'm looking for because now I can divide out sine squared in the denominator. Now I can divide out this sine, which is just gonna leave me with a one minus a cosine of theta all over the sine of theta. Okay, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by the conjugate here um, in the numerator. What that's going to do is that's going to produce a Pythagorean identity um, that we can simplify. So this gives us a sine squared of theta minus one in the numerator. Down below, I'm gonna rewrite the cotangent here as a cosine squared of theta all over a sine squared of theta times a sine of theta minus one. Now, again, I wanna get this off. I recognize this to be a cosine squared of theta, sorry, a negative cosine squared of theta using my Pythagorean identity. And then over here, I want to get rid of this fraction Right? So to get rid of this fraction, what I'm gonna do is multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal here is gonna be a sine squared of theta all over a cosine squared of theta. And you're gonna multiply that in the numerator as well as on the denominator. So watch what happens here. Now this is technically over one. So therefore those divide out, I'm left with a negative sine squared of theta. And then over here, the cosine squared, cosine squared, sine squared and sine squared, leave me with a sine of theta minus one. Verify. Thank you for watching this series on verifying trigonometric identities. I have plenty more examples for you down in the playlist below. Cheers.